And the, the title of the picture in the upcoming book is Standard Operating Procedures. Yes. Um, if soldiers had digital cameras and and all these other ways to capture but capture photos and, and moments in history where we was at war before, would we have seen some of these same atrocities in Vietnam or Korea or any other war America has been involved in? I think we would have. It's hard to say, of course, because this is something completely new. It's a new phenomenon. Digital photography, uh, the digital distribution of photography, the electronic distribution of photography. Um, it's something that has never really happened before. But one thing is absolutely clear this time around is if not for these photographs, we would have no knowledge of what happened there. And the photographs have even if they have shocked, embarrassed, ashamed America, uh, better to be shocked, embarrassed, and ashamed of the truth than just hidden away with a hood on your head and see nothing. I don't know. I swear to God, I don't know. Speaking of the photographs, a lot of the photographs that I've seen in the picture weren't the photographs that were being you know, display when the, when the media got hold of what happened in Abu Ghraib. How were you able to get these photographs and then how were you able to uh, do interviews with these quote unquote bad apples? Uh, by talking to people and encouraging them to talk to me. It's not any kind of secret sauce here that okay. I have some method. It's time consuming, it's talking to people, gaining their trust, trying to convince them that I really do want to hear their story, that I'm not just another guy who wants to pillory them in the press, that I really, really want to find out something. I really want to hear what they're about. That is, that is what I've tried to do. Now, was your perception of these, again, quote unquote, bad apples changed after you did, after you were, after you were able to interview them? Uh, yeah, it can, can change dramatically. They've been portrayed as monsters. They're not monsters. They're people like you and me. I mean, the history of this country is a history of trying, trying to create a level playing field for all Americans. That is supposedly what we're about. It's, I like to think that's what we're about. It makes me proud to be an American. Okay. Uh, if I see a story where the big guys walk away and the little guys get punished, it doesn't even matter, are the little guys lily white, <laughs> you know, right, did right. they do nothing wrong? No, they did things that were wrong, they're not lily white. But compared to what the big guys did, the big guys walk and the little guys go to prison. And that's something that I feel is deeply, deeply wrong. Right, right. Um, and should not be allowed, it should not be tolerated. In the course of your investigation, when you was doing these interviews with the, the soldiers and MPs, were you able to interview any of the, the detainees that were displayed in the movie? I wanted to stay with the photographs. I wanted very much to find the detainees who were in the photographs that I was examining. So I tried very hard to find the guy that was on the box with wires. Spent a year and a half trying to find him. Paid people in Iraq to try to find him. Um, couldn't. He might be in prison still. He might be dead. Uh, remember, Iraq is a country in chaos, no matter what you hear, and finding anybody there is really, really, really difficult. Okay. Gilligan. The General Portrayers Report uh, on the progress of the surge came out uh, last, this week, and um, I was wondering, since you did so much investigating, if you were, I mean, going from the knowledge you have, if you had to report on our progress uh, in Iraq right now, what would you tell the American people? Of course, I'm not in Iraq as we speak, and my knowledge of Iraq is limited to the story that I try to tell, and it's a story that goes back to 2003. But I, of course, read the papers, I read the blogs, just like the next guy. Um, the story 
of the Iraq war is a story of us not seeing things, not seeing things. We didn't see what was in the photographs. We didn't see the war for what it was. We were sold a bill of goods about the purpose of the war. I sometimes think that for years, the entire foreign policy of the United States of America, this is a country of 300 million people, the entire foreign policy of this country was just kill Saddam. We have been told lies, untruths. I don't really care how you want to describe it. But we have never seen the true picture of Iraq, not from the very beginning. And if you ask me, do we see it now, I would say most certainly not. Uh, so so this, this picture was, you know, it, I'm not going to say it was incomplete, but there's so much content in the picture. I was just wondering, what's next? Or what are you going to do with what you weren't able to put in the picture? Well, there's a book, Standard Operating Procedure. There's the essays that I'm writing for the New York Times. There's a website that I would like to create with everything on it. I'd like to continue, actually. I'd like to... Um, it's wrong. It's wrong to blame the little guy and to walk away. And I would like to. Who knows what I can do? I'm a little guy, too, by the way. <laughs> I'm just a filmmaker. But I would like to do anything in my power to redress what I consider to be a terrible wrong, a terrible injustice.